Today is December the 12th, 2019, and I'm going to make a quick video here of how I have learned to test mercury vapor rectifiers. Uh, I just uh, recently got in and started building a big power supply, and in this case, using these uh, big 872s, and I got four of them. And I had some real problem when I plugged them into the power supply belt. But I want to show you how to determine which ones are bad. First of all, we got to know what it looks like when they're good. Now, these are 866s. We're going to turn around. These two right here are 866s. I'm going to show you what good mercury vapor rectifiers look like. And then we'll turn to the 872s, and I'll show you what they look like. And then I'll show you what happens when you put in a bad one and how I've learned to test them. It's actually pretty simple. A little bit dangerous. You know, you're dealing with deadly voltages here, so I don't recommend... I do not recommend anybody do anything. I just can't go there. Uh, there's it's just too much liability. But if you do mess with this stuff, and it's your choice, and you want to know uh, the method that I've used to determine if these rectifiers are good, well, then stay tuned. I'll show you very quickly. I'm going to turn out the light. Well, if I turn out the light, I'll put us in the dark. Okay, they're off right now, but let me turn them on. This is not about this amplifier, but th this is about these rectifiers. I'm going to turn the rectifiers on, and you can see how they light up. Let's scoop in on them. See how they've got that that beautiful blue uh, between the uh, the plate. The plate is that circular uh, piece of metal at the top. That's the anode, and the cathode is uh, what's beneath it. That's where the filament is. And that beautiful blue. It's actually more purple. The uh, camera makes it kind of blue. But anyway, that's what they look like. The tubes next to them, if somebody asks, those are, uh, those are VR tubes, voltage regulator tubes. Those are VR150s. The different uh, voltage level tubes, like a VR105 or a VR75, they, have, they are actually a different color. And uh, in, this, in this case, they're kind of a pink. But uh, that's not what it's about. It's about that, that beautiful blue glow that we use. Now, I've read some blogs. I might comment on this, too. I've read some blogs where these, where some people just trash the MV rectifiers. Well, I'm going to tell you, I've used them for decades. I use a pair in a 500-plus watt 300, 3-400Z amplifier on RF on 20 meters, and they work great. I don't have any problem with hash or any... Or the, any supposedly RF that things are generating. There's just some fear-mongering that I've uh, read recently out in some blogs. So, uh, you know, use them at your own risk. But um, I'm using them because I think they're just really neat. Uh, they can handle a lot of power, and uh, they're quite beautiful. And, of course, the voltages that they operate at are absolutely deadly, possibly death on contact. So you always have to keep that in mind. Uh, as much as we love this stuff, it is not our friend. It will kill us if we're not careful. It's like milking rattlesnakes. Okay, let's go over to the 872s. Okay, now these are the 872s. I, I did turn out the lights because I don't have much of a load on the output, so I want you to be able to see uh, how they behave. You can see the filaments lit in there. They're actually very orange. The uh, camera seems to make them look a little pink. But let's put high voltage on them. Now these are the good rectifiers. And you'll see basically the same thing. And you can see uh, see it die down a little bit as the, as the capacitors are charged. And uh, that right there is a DC output of about 1300 volts. I'm actually going to double that and into a bridge. But um, when I put the bad ones in there, I had a solid state uh, set of rectifiers in it for the other half of the bridge. And it shorted uh, half of them for some reason. I guess the bad one... Apparently what happens is, you know, a diode should only conduct during a half cycle. The, the, the diode, in this case these mercury vapor rectifiers, should only be conducting when the plate is positive with respect to the cathode. Well, apparently in the bad ones, uh, it must be conducting all the time, and it basically ends up shorting the uh, the output, uh, the power transformer secondary, the high voltage secondary. Uh, that big transformer back there came from Sandia Labs. It's a it's a pretty little thing, 
Okay, now let me turn on the light so you can see a little bit more of what's back there. Yeah, and you can see the transform behind it. I'm just running a center tap right now. But that's what a good one looks like. Let's look at some bad ones now. Okay, we're back again. Let me see if I can get this just about right. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> I have plugged in a bad one over on the left side. This one right here. This is the good one, but I'm leaving it in there. But here is my test method. Use it if you choose. Is I have... Uh, I keep my left hand in my pocket, even though this thing's not on. I've removed the plate cap from the good one. So I'm just plugging in one at a time, so to speak. Now again, I'll repeat that, you know, if a diode is good, it's only going to conduct a half cycle. So it's only going to conduct when the anode is positive in respect to the cathode. Well, it's my conclusion that a bad one conducts uh, both half cycles. It conducts all the time. Watch what happens when I turn it on now with just one in there. So everything is still intact. The power supply is still com complete. But I've taken one off and put one on. And we're going to get just a little bit. I think we've got to get a little bit closer to this one. And now let me turn out the big light here. And here we go. It's glowing. It looks kind of pink in the camera now, but there is no DC on it yet. Well, what you're seeing in that pink is actually the orange of, of the filament. But here we go. Let's see. Maybe the better way to do it is like this. Look at that. That is not normal. And look down inside the filament. I don't know if you can see it as clearly as me. I think the camera is a little overwhelmed. There's a super bright spot down inside. That is abnormal. Very abnormal. That tube is bad. As beautiful as it is, it's bad. And if you hook up the other side, what obviously ends up happening is this one is conducting all the time and the other one's conducting half the cycle, so half the cycle is dead shorted across the secondary of the transformer. And it really wrecks havoc on the fuses. It just vaporizes them so that when you look at them, you know, they, they turn black and shiny inside. You can kind of tell a little bit of what's going on in your equipment when it blows fuses. If you look at them, and the uh, if you look at the fuse and it's just kind of slowly been melted, it maybe that you know maybe it's been working too long, too many years at it, and it just finally uh, just kind of finally gave it up. But uh, when you look at a fuse and it's uh, the whole inside has got vaporized uh, metal all over it from the, from the fuse element, then you know that something catastrophic has happened. Well, anyway, that's it. If I put the plate cap back on this one right here at the same time, it's going to do exactly what I'm talking about. This one's going to conduct a half cycle. This one's going to conduct a full cycle. So half the time, I'll have the, uh, the secondary of the uh, transformer shorted, and it's, uh, it's not a good thing. We're not going to do that. Now, let me show you one more thing about some MV rectifiers before you come to conclusions that everything is bad and what have you. These guys right here are some of the older versions, I suppose, of the uh, mercury vapor rectifiers. Let me scoop out here a little bit. And when I plug these into my transmitter that has 3,500 volts output, uh, they blow the fuse and they actually even uh, short a, um, a solid state uh, uh, relay I have in there. So it, it, it does some real damage to my uh, to, <coughs> to my transmitter and I end up having to repair it much more than just replace the fuse. But in this amplifier right here, one that I just showed you, it, I'm not going to do it, but I'm just telling you, when I plug them into this amplifier, when I remove these two and plug them in there with 750 volts output, they work perfectly. They're beautiful. So, you know, um, uh, they can work at some voltages and not at others. That's an absolute fact. Now, I've been giving these plenty of time. I know somebody's going to say, oh, you've given plenty of time for the uh, mercury to, to stabilize in there. And the answer is yes, I have. I've been very patient with them. 
and if you want to go just a little bit more modern on uh, these types of rectifiers and you and you have to build with these you can also go to the 3b28 they're a xenon field they don't have that uh, they have a little bit of that uh, uh, purple glow in them but it's it's not it's not a very big deal but they work great and they work at 3500 volts these do and uh, here's the other bad one if I plug it in you'll see the same thing so I'm not going to do it again but with both tubes in or you could actually remove the other one but with just one tube in at a time you can see what's happening and uh, that was very very abnormal hope that helps be careful again I can't recommend you build anything especially with high voltage this stuff will kill you and uh, you never get never get uh, complacent never get comfortable keep one hand in your pocket I mean I keep one hand in my pocket sometime when I'm just pulling screwdrivers out of the drawer I guess I've made that such a habit I'm always uh, trying to protect myself from it because uh, one lazy moment and, and you can end up dead thanks for watching stay safe